I finally have my hands on the new Xiaomi 14 Ultra, and it is by far Xiaomi's most extreme smartphone to date. The box itself looks identical to last year's, and inside of it, you'll find the device itself, a clear hard shell case, a 6 amp charging cable, and a 90 watt hypercharged charging block. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra launched in the global market just days after the Chinese event, but the global variant is naturally more expensive, so the rather hefty 1,500 euro price tag is a hard pill to swallow. That said, it only comes in one variant with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, so if you compare it to other flagships in Europe, it's actually a fair price. But at the end of the day, it's still very hard to justify a smartphone for that amount of money. However, if it's a camera first and smartphone second, it might just be worth it. And I say that because Xiaomi are seriously targeting camera enthusiasts with their new photography kit. In its massive box, you'll find a premium looking dual tone woven leather case, a matching camera grip designed to be used with the case, two decoration rings, a 67 millimeter filter adapter ring, and a hand strap. The rings can be easily removed by pressing the safety button and rotating the ring out of place, and just as easily mounted by doing so in the opposite way. The grip has a suede finish on the inside as well as a USB-C output. There are buttons and dials on the outside as well as a USB-C input to charge up the built-in 1500 milliamp hour battery, which actually doubles up as a power bank for your phone. And once it's fully rigged up, people are going to have a hard time figuring out that you are actually holding a smartphone. Xiaomi's new photography kit is actually free if you purchase a 14 Ultra in certain regions, but if you're curious about its standalone price, it goes for about 200 euros. That said, let's find out what this thing can actually do. You'll notice that there's a cutout for the Xiaomi logo on the case, but this is actually for the grip to lock on the device, which gives you that extra peace of mind. Once you slide the grip on the case, it's easy to lock in place, and there's no pairing needed. Once connected via USB-C, a floating window pops up, indicating the battery percentage of both the grip and the phone. The first thing you'll notice when you tap on settings is the charging auto disconnect toggle. With this enabled, your phone will be charged up to 80%, but if it's already above 80%, the grip will power your phone and keep your percentage the same, this is known as bypass charging. To take things even further, you can charge your phone at its max 90 watts without removing the grip by using the built-in USB-C port. It will charge up your phone first and will then charge the grip. You can choose between two different quick launch options and of course you can also adjust how the grip actually works. You can change the shutter button to burst or single photo. It's a two-stage button, so when in the camera app, you can hold down to focus and then click in to take the snap. The zoom lever can be set to continuous or focal length switch, so a simple flick will cycle between different zoom ranges. The dial can be adjusted to multiple different pro camera features, but since the main camera has variable aperture, that seems like the obvious option. And of course the video button can be changed as well, even to photocentric features but focus peaking seems relevant when in pro mode. It's also awesome to see that when you use the video button to record video, it auto switches to video mode and starts the recording. Now that we have our camera grip fully customized, I'm sure you guys are very keen to see how the Xiaomi 14 Ultra actually performs. But before we get into testing out camera performance, it's very important to know that your images will be safe and easily recovered should anything go wrong. And that's where Dr. Phone by Wondershare comes in. Not only can this app recover your lost data, such as the camera samples I'm about to show you, but it can also keep secure backups of your entire device, which you can then access later on in order to restore all of your backed up data to any device you're currently using. Another plus about Dr. Phone is that it eliminates the struggle when you wanna to upgrade to the new Xiaomi 14 Ultra from your old iPhone or any other Android device. I don't know about you guys, but I can never fully transfer my iPhone to my Android or vice versa versa, and the software makes this transition simple and seamless, all within the software which you'll need to have installed on your Windows or Mac. 
Transferring your WhatsApp messages from your iPhone to your new Android is another frustrating procedure, but this software makes it simple to migrate all of your chats over with ease. Dr. Phone also offers a fleet of other useful features, but one of my favorites has to be the ability to bypass lock screen passcodes or even iCloud passwords. To learn more about Dr. Phone, be sure to check out the link in the description down below. But for now, let's focus up on that ridiculous camera setup on the back of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. The module itself looks identical to last year's, but this time there is no elevated portion of the back plate since the bump itself is now thicker thanks to a glossy ring which sits under the new Leica Sumilux aspherical lens which has an anti-glare lens coating and boasts a spin coated infrared light filter. The module looks similar to last year's since three of the four 50 megapixel sensors are identical. The 12 millimeter ultra wide camera is the exact same IMX 858 sensor with a 122 degree field of view and autofocus which helps with macro photography. The 75 millimeter telephoto camera is also the same IMX 858 sensor with 32 times optical zoom and OIS, but this time it's a floating sensor with macro capabilities, much like we saw on the Xiaomi 13 Pro. The 120 millimeter periscope is again the same IMX 858 sensor with 5 times optical zoom and OIS, but it now has a wider aperture at f2.5 and now also offers close up focusing. But the star of the show has to be the next generation 1 inch type main sensor, known as the Sony LYT900. It's a stacked sensor, so low light performance should be incredible. It packs in dual native ISO and, of course, still has optical image stabilization, multi directional PDAF, and laser autofocus. This is not the first time I've seen this sensor on a flagship smartphone, but Xiaomi have once again taken things up a level by customizing the sensor with variable aperture. Last year's 13 Ultra also had variable aperture, but you could only shift it between two different f-stops. This time, Xiaomi have introduced stepless variable aperture, which can stop anywhere between f1.63 and f4.0. The narrowest aperture is the same as last year, but the widest f1.63 aperture is noticeably wider than last year's f1.9 opening. However, to achieve stepless aperture, you'll need to use Pro Mode in the camera app. The regular photo mode only allows you to switch between four different aperture stops, which is honestly fine for most anyway. That said, if you're a lazy photographer like me, then you'll be happy to hear that there is also an auto aperture mode, which lets the phone decide which aperture stop to use based on the scene and lighting and it works phenomenally well. And the final cherry on top of this quad camera setup is that we are still treated to a TOF 3D sensor for depth mapping, and of course, Xiaomi's long-standing partnership with Leica, which offers two different Leica styles, that being Leica Vibrance and Leica Authentic. Authentic is more natural, while Vibrance is more vivid and is likely what most users would stick to. Vibrance is also the default mode, so that's what we'll be using for the remainder of these photos. Using different aperture styles with the main camera is certainly useful and the differences are noticeable. The narrowest aperture on the right side has a large depth of field for a sharper, dimmer image with more in focus, as opposed to the widest aperture on the left which has a shallow depth of field for a softer, brighter image with the subject as the main focus point. This shows how portrait mode is not really needed for natural looking background blur and alleviates the edge detection that portrait mode typically causes. Which is evidence here when we used portrait mode. Sometimes portrait mode creates unnatural edges around the subject, but I have to say Xiaomi usually have fantastic edge detection when digitally blurring the background. They have also included two different portrait modes this year, namely Leica Portrait and Master Portrait. Leica Portrait mode is similar to Leica Vibrant, while Master Portrait mode is similar to Leica Authentic. Both look great and both can be used with the telephoto camera as well. Both zoom lenses now offer close-up focusing distances, which was missing from the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, and the Ultra Wide can of course shoot macro photos too. But the floating telephoto camera has to be my pick when taking close-up shots. Again, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra did not have a floating sensor. The Ultra Wide takes very good photos, whether in 50 megapixel mode or bin down mode, and the color tones are matched when using the main camera, which also offers two times lossless in sensor zoom. Color tones slightly adjust when using the telephoto camera for a 3.2 times optically zoomed shot, and things are even more saturated when shifting to the periscope for a five times optical zoom photo. That said, both zoom lenses are filled with fantastic color, dynamic 
dynamic range and detail, and the periscope sensor also offers 10 times in sensor zoom for a detail packed photo. Higher focal lengths are now more detailed as well, thanks to Xiaomi's new ultra zoom mode, which uses AI to improve clarity. This leaves us with probably the best 30 times zoom I have ever seen produced from a smartphone. The max zoom range is still 120x, but it comes out looking a lot cleaner than previous Xiaomi flagships. The 14 Ultra can also shoot continuous 4K 60fps video, which lets you switch from the ultra wide to the main to both zoom lenses all the way up to 15 times zoom in a single video. This was limited to 30fps on the 13 Ultra. You can of course record 4K 60fps video across all four sensors, but more impressively, you can shoot 8K 30fps video using any of the four cameras. The 13 Ultra could only record 8K video at 24fps, but the 14 Ultra gives you the choice of 24 or 30 frames per second. Ultra wide and main 4K video come out looking incredible, and things are very stable at 60fps, but if you prefer quicker camera movements, there's also an option for 4K 120fps, but it's limited to just the main camera. There was no standard 120fps recording option on last year's Xiaomi 13 Ultra. And for some reason, Xiaomi have still not upgraded ultra steady video, which is still limited to 1080p and 30 FPS and it is still very jittery. Slow motion video can still be shot at 1080p 960fps across all four cameras and there is still a 1920fps option which is limited to the main camera and utilizes frame interpolation. We still have 4K Dolby Vision video which only works with the main sensor but we now have something called Master Cinema Mode which offers high dynamic range videos in 10-bit Rec 2020 which is something you don't typically see in smartphones. This is also limited to the main camera. There is no bokeh video mode option this year, which actually makes sense due to the wide aperture of the main camera, which as we saw when taking photos, provides a natural shallow depth of field anyway. The floating telephoto also provides a similar effect due to its low f1.8 aperture. This not only helps with depth of field, but exposure as well since a wider lens allows more light to enter the scene, which is especially important when taking videos in low lit environments or at night. The lower f-stop of the periscope camera this year also brightens up video at night, but there is slightly more noise grain when compared to the 3.2 times telephoto sensor. Ultra wide video is never really bright in a dark scene but it is still very good, however it can't compare to when recording with the main camera, especially when you enable night video mode, which shifts the lens to f1.63 and brightens up the shot without any noise grain effect. This is more evident when recording while walking around, but since the main camera drops its shutter angle to achieve brighter video, sometimes quick movements can result in slightly shaky video but it's not all that bad and it's very normal. Taking photos at night has the ultra wide perform decently, but it certainly leaves much to be desired, especially when you look at how incredible night shots come out when using the main camera. I feel that the floating telephoto offers cleaner photos than the periscope at night due to its wider aperture, but things still come out great even when taking a 10 times in sensor zoom photo. When reaching 30 times zoom levels, noise grain starts to become apparent, which gets worse the more you zoom in, but in all fairness, smartphones have come a very long way in terms of long zoom range shots. There's still super moon mode for those aspiring astronomers out there, and this mode is still limited to the periscope camera from 5 times to 60 times zoom levels. Taking photos of me at night looks fantastic, whether you use the main or telephoto camera, due to their wide apertures, which produces fantastic exposure and natural background blur. And while portrait mode at night looks a bit artificial, shots still come out incredible when using the main camera. But portrait mode isn't really needed when you can manually adjust the aperture of the main sensor to allow for more light and a softer, more natural depth of field. We're getting to that point now where most camera centric photos phones are taking equally as good photos and videos, which means that smartphone brands need to start focusing on finer details in order to stand above the rest. Xiaomi have done just that with the 14 Ultra, thanks to widening up apertures on most of its cameras, including stepless aperture on its next generation 1 inch type main sensor, as well as including 8K video, 4K 120fps video, and even Rec 2020. Not only are Xiaomi targeting camera enthusiasts, but aspiring videographers as well. 
You can pick the Xiaomi 14 Ultra up in black or white in the global market and both of them are exactly the same aside from their color. I have the white variant and it looks amazing. The black camera lens has a textured side finish which flows down into a slim gold ring that sits on top of a thicker silver ring in place of the elevated back plate we saw last year. The back material is still nanotech vegan leather but it now has a thinner and lighter finish with six times improved wear resistance. This means it now sits flush with the matte finished high strength aluminum frame which is now 1.38 times stronger and wraps from the back to the side of the phone. And on top of it sits a power button which is now textured. It's now slightly thicker at 9.2 millimeters, noticeably lighter at 219.8 grams and it still has an IP68 dust and water resistant certification. The display is now protected by Xiaomi's in-house made shield glass which which supposedly results in 10 times higher drop resistance when compared to the 13 Ultra which uses Gorilla Glass Victors. And the bezels wrapping around are now thinner and more symmetrical. There's still a punch hole notch at the top center of its screen which houses the same sized 32 megapixel selfie camera but it now finally supports 4K video. And it takes better photos too with better exposure and dynamic range thanks to improved post-processing. You can take selfies at 0.8x or 1x ranges, but portrait mode is limited to 1x and edge detection isn't always perfect. What's up guys, this is Tech Nick recording a 4K 60fps selfie video on the brand new ultra flagship Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Yes, that's right, it finally has 4K video and not only 4K but 60fps as well. To give you a little bit of a comparison, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra only had 1080p and 60fps selfie video recording. Let me know your thoughts on the video quality as well as the microphone quality. It's awesome to see 4K 60fps selfie video added to Xiaomi's top end smartphone, but unfortunately bokeh video is still limited to 1080p resolution. Bokeh video is a must for the selfie camera since it doesn't have variable aperture tech and selfie video at night is decently lit up thanks to auto adjusted frame rates. Selfie photos come out looking very good at night with almost no noise grain and while taking photos with the flash enabled gives off a bit of a washed look, detail is still booming and tonal range is still intact. Not having 4K selfie video in last year's Xiaomi 13 Ultra was a huge disappointment for me. So naturally I'm pretty happy it's included this time round. But it is very expected, especially at this price point. What's also expected at this price point is a very good quality display. So let's check out what's changed. It's the same sized 6.73 inch AMOLED display with the same QHD resolution, the same 12 bit color depth, which can display 68 billion colors and offers customizable DCI-P3 color profiles, supports the same HDR types, including Dolby Vision, the same Widevine L1 CDM, has the same 1920Hz PWM dimming and the same 1 to 120Hz LTPO refresh rate with the same 240Hz touch sampling rate. So what's actually changed? Well, it's now an upgraded all-around liquid C8 luminescent display, all around, meaning all four sides and corners are curved. This might not sound promising for flat screen fans, but the curves are almost non-apparent at all leaving users with a flat screen experience while still maintaining the comfort of curved edges. It has now also acquired triple TUF Rhineland IK certifications and its peak brightness has jumped up to 3000 nits which is not the highest I've seen but it is certainly an upgrade. When it comes to software the Xiaomi 14 Ultra makes use of Xiaomi's new HyperOS software which is skinned over Android 14. And since this is fully fledged global software, of course all of Google's goodies are included. HyperOS is designed with Xiaomi's new human car home ecosystem in mind, so cross device support is now better than ever, and while it may look identical to MIUI 14, the overall UI has been revamped by the new graphics subsystem which leads to better textures, colors, shadows, blurs and dynamic animations. We still have large folders which I have really come to enjoy, a familiar app drawer and a new control center. 
And yes, they have added the settings icon back to the control center. The battery capacity is still the same 5000 milliamps and it is still protected by the G1 and P2 search chipsets. Wire charging is still the same at 90 watts, but wireless charging has seen an increase all the way up to 80 watts, which is just insane. There is of course still reverse wireless charging and the cherry on top is that we now have a three times larger ice loop cooling system which now includes a thermal loop exclusively for the camera module. This means that when the camera module heats up the rest of the components will remain happy which includes 512 gigs of UFS 4.0 storage, 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and of course the new 4 nanometer run Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 CPU. Using all of this alongside Xiaomi's performance mode and settings leads to very impressive benchmark scores across multiple different benchmark apps. All of these specs not only help achieve high benchmark scores but also aid in gaming performance and the first game I jumped into was Genshin Impact which is a very graphically demanding game when using maxed out settings. The game is capped at 60 FPS on all devices and the Xiaomi 14 Ultra had no issues sticking to that max frame rate the whole time playing with minimal frame drops and stutters. The next game we played was Real Racing 3 which has an unlimited frame cap so it was no surprise to see that we managed a stable 120 FPS on average without the device ever feeling too hot. And then last but not least we opened up Call of Duty Mobile and I was once again not surprised to see the phone reach 120 FPS when setting the game to ultra frame rate mode. However, the device did start to feel rather warm after playing for a while, which landed up slightly dimming the screen. But in all fairness, it was a very hot day when I was playing a whopping 33 degrees Celsius here in South Africa. Xiaomi's ultimate smartphone also packs in upgraded Bluetooth 5.4, NFC, dual SIM 5G, Wi-Fi 7, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, an IR blaster which is now located within the camera module, an X-axis linear vibration motor, a new 4 microphone array and of course dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos so let's go ahead and give them a listen. The latest Ultramid flagship from Xiaomi takes everything that was great about the 13 Ultra and improved on it with the new 14 Ultra. It can still play games like a champion thanks to the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset but it's now kept cooler thanks to an improved cooling system. It has the same battery size and wired charging speeds but wireless charging speeds are now faster. It offers a similar software experience but it now has a new graphic subsystem. It has a similar display but it now uses better materials, has better curvature and higher brightness levels. It has the same selfie camera but now supports 4 4K 60fps selfie video and it has an identical camera setup but it now offers better minimum focusing distances, wider apertures, stepless aperture for the new generation 1 inch type main camera, a fleet of new video options and features and it's all wrapped up in a lighter, stronger and more premium design. The only deal breaker I can really see here is that price tag. But if you consider other flagship smartphones with this amount of storage, you'll soon realize that its price is rather justified. Especially if you consider all the new hardware improvements, which most other smartphone brands tend to skip out on with their new releases year after year. That said, it is still a very steep price. But I do think it's certainly worth it if you can pick it up at a discounted rate or if you can get it bundled up with the new photography kits. If you're gonna spend this amount of money anyway, why not get a more exciting device which is practically a camera with smartphone capabilities? Let me know your thoughts on how the Xiaomi 14 Ultra stacks up against the competition and if you think it's worth its price. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.